Hello everybody, Bishop Cecchio here. Just want to wish you a happy and blessed Thanksgiving. Uh, it's such a great time of year, uh, Thanksgiving. I love this holiday, uh, a day that reminds us of our need to thank God for the blessings that he's given us and to our country. And although we have so much to be blessed for, uh, we, we look around in the news and in the world and we see so many hardships, huh? And uh, it can sadden us, it can make us, our hearts heavy on Thanksgiving. So we pray for all those situations. We pray in gratitude for the blessings that God has given us and our country. And maybe this year, make peace with one person if you need to make peace with someone, huh? Reach out to a family member or a friend uh, and start peace with you, huh? That's the way it starts to spread throughout our world. Uh, reconcile with someone that you need to, if there's somebody you need to. So uh, let's make that effort this week, huh? It'll make our uh, Advent season and Christmas all the more joyful and it will help spread peace throughout our world. So sorry to give you an assignment on Thanksgiving, <laughs> a joyful beautiful holiday for us all, uh, but let's join in prayer, huh? especially for those who need our prayers this year, even as we thank God for the blessings that he's given us. God bless you and happy Thanksgiving. Hello everybody, Bishop Cecchio here. Just want to wish you a happy and blessed Thanksgiving. Uh, it's such a great time of year, uh, Thanksgiving. I love this holiday, a uh, day that reminds us of our need to thank God for the blessings that he's given us and to our country. And uh, although we have so much to be blessed for, uh, we, we look around in the news and in the world and we see so many hardships, huh? And uh, it can sadden us, it can make us, our hearts heavy on Thanksgiving. So we pray for all those situations. We pray in gratitude for the blessings that God has given us and our country. And maybe this year, make peace with one person if you need to make peace with someone, huh? Reach out to a family member or a friend uh, and start peace with you, huh? That's the way it starts to spread throughout our world. Uh, reconcile with someone that you need to, if there's somebody you need to. So uh, let's make that effort this week, huh? It'll make our uh, Advent season and Christmas all the more joyful and it will help spread peace throughout our world. So sorry to give you an assignment on Thanksgiving, a joyful beautiful holiday for us all, uh, but let's join in prayer, huh? especially for those who need our prayers this year, even as we thank God for the blessings that he's given us. God bless you and happy Thanksgiving.
Happy Thanksgiving and welcome. Today we celebrate the blessings our Lord has given to us and to our country. Our celebrant at this morning's liturgy is Bishop Chacchio, with Father Christie, Father Jay, and Father Justin concelebrating. He is assisted by the deacons of St. Francis. And at this Mass, we especially remember John and Louise Byers and Concepcion Harton. Please remember in prayer those who are sick and those who have died. Our entrance hymn is on the first page of your music supplement. Come, ye thankful people, come. Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Peace be with you. Good morning, everyone. Happy Thanksgiving, huh? Thank you for joining in this great moment of prayer, a moment of thanks to God uh, for the great blessings that he showered down upon us. Uh, it's good of you to be here for this, and i um, grateful to be joining you in your Thanksgiving celebrations today by beginning uh, with praising our Father. So let us begin, as usual, by pausing and calling to mind their sins, asking the Lord to pardon our offenses against him and one another so that we may worthily celebrate this Eucharist. Lord Jesus, you healed the sick. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you forgave sinners. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you give us yourself to heal us and to bring us strength. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Let us pray. Father, all powerful, your gifts of love are countless and your goodness infinite. As we come before you on Thanksgiving Day with gratitude for your kindness, open our hearts to have concern for every man, woman, and child so that we may share your gifts in loving service. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. 
A reading from the book of Sirach. And now, bless the God of all, who has done wondrous things on earth, who fosters people's growth from their mother's womb and fashions them according to his will. May he grant you joy of heart and may peace abide among you. May his goodness toward us endure in Israel to deliver us in our days. A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. I give thanks to my God always on your account for the grace of God bestowed on you in Christ Jesus, that in him you were enriched in every way with all discourse and all knowledge, as the testimony to Christ was confirmed among you, so that you are not lacking in any spiritual gift as you wait for the revelation of our Lord Jesus Christ. He will keep you firm to the end, irreproachable on the day of our Lord Jesus Christ. God is faithful and by him you will call to fellowship with his Son, 
Jesus Christ, our Lord. The word of the Lord. Thanks. Thanks. Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. As Jesus continued his journey to Jerusalem, he traveled through Samaria and Galilee. As he was entering a village, ten persons with leprosy met him. They stood at a distance from him and raised their voice, saying, Jesus, Master, have pity on us. When he saw them, he said, go show yourselves to the priests. As they were going, they were cleansed. And one of them, realizing he had been healed, returned glorifying God in a loud voice and fell at the feet of Jesus and thanked him. He was a Samaritan. Jesus said in reply, Ten were cleansed, were they not? Where are the other nine? Is none but this foreigner returned to give thanks to God? Then he said to him, Stand up and go. Your faith has saved you. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise you, Lord Jesus Christ. Happy Thanksgiving, everyone. Bishop Cecchio, it's such a great honor to have you to celebrate with us. You know, Bishop has 90 parishes in the Diocese of Metuchen. So every weekend, he's usually out at all those different um, parishes, uh, celebrating Mass for them, meeting the people, so they know they have a shepherd. And we know that he's here. We see him walking all over the parish, but we're so grateful that Thanksgiving Day that he um, spends here with us. Uh, at St. Francis. We love you, Bishop, and thank you. Um, <clears throat> this day that we celebrate, Thanksgiving Day, I did a little research, and maybe you know these things, but it's fascinating to realize that Thanksgiving, we know probably from grade school, that uh, it was celebrated on those first shores of, in New England with the first settlers. But successively it grew, and there were various different traditions to celebrate some kind of Thanksgiving for decades. Um, but it wasn't uniform. And then in 1863, it was uh, President uh, Abraham Lincoln who uh, made a proclamation that Thanksgiving would be celebrated uh, all over as a national holiday. And it would be the uh, last Thursday or the fourth Thursday of the uh, 
the month of uh, November. Um, and interestingly, when he made that um, proclamation, it was in the middle of the Civil War. It was in 1863. The war didn't end until 1865 or I think 1866. But when he made that proclamation, he asked for a ceasefire and he said that everybody should count their blessings, that we should look to the source of where all our blessings come, even in the midst of conflict. And he also said that we should do penance. Imagine a president calling the country to do penance, that we should do penance for our disobedience to God and our hard-heartedness, that if we want to be a prosperous nation, we have to be obedient to God. That was the instinct and the inspiration of having a national civil holiday. It sounds like a religious holiday, and if it does, well, it is, because Thanksgiving, of course, is deeply embedded in our Jewish Christian tradition. We know that our Lord, on the night before he died, he took bread and wine and he gave thanksgiving to the Father. And it was the very night before he was going to be apprehended, he was going to uh, go and undergo his passion and his death, and he was still in a posture of thanksgiving to the Father, no matter what was happening, to give thanks to God. And that thanksgiving of that offering of the bread and the wine and that, that first celebration that the Lord had with his apostles where he did that, well, that's our Holy Eucharist. The, our, our word Eucharist in Greek, it means thanksgiving. So every time we come to celebrate the Holy Mass, we are in thanksgiving. But <clears throat> like so often can happen, thanksgiving can become habitual or kind of um, sort of like um, an expected courtesy. Uh, you know, we say thank you at a cash register or thank you for someone holding the door. And it's not that we don't mean it, but it can become almost like a colloquialism that's just appropriate to say. And that's not what we mean by today's celebration and certainly not what we mean by the celebration of Holy Mass. It's really meant to come from an interior place of the heart where we recognize and realize that we couldn't even get up this morning unless a loving Father were holding us and giving us breath in our lungs, giving us the, the ability to, to walk, to think, to get in the car, to come here. All of that is a gift. But we frequently, and I'll speak for myself, we frequently, we don't give thanks for things until we don't have them. You know, I'll share a little bit with you. My right knee, it hurts some days. And I've never thanked God for my knees, but when it doesn't hurt, I say, wow, thank you, God, for my knees. Now, I didn't used to do that. I never thanked God for my knees until it wasn't working quite right. And I think that's the case with a lot of us is that we oftentimes take our blessings for granted. And sadly, we can even take God for granted. And hence, we need to be called back to the fundamental truth that we are here because of God's love, because he wills it, because he desires us, and he wants us to recognize him and to give back to him what he gives to us. Now, interestingly, the, the, um, probably the main symbol for Thanksgiving is probably a, a banquet table. I suspect that all of you are going to have some form of a celebration around a table today. And it's our instinct that everybody should be able to do that. You know, so I'm so proud and grateful to so many uh, people in our parish, our social concerns ministry and different people in the parish have provided a bountiful amount of gifts to help people who otherwise would not be celebrating. And, and why do we do that? Well, because, it's, because everybody should be around our table. 
Everybody should taste something of God's goodness and his love today. And, and even people who perhaps they've never had Thanksgiving in our country, we want them to be included. You know, everybody should taste the goodness of the Lord. Father Justin and, and John, our seminarian, this is their first Thanksgiving in America. Um, I know Father Justin's going to be going to an Indian family, and I, he'll have probably traditional uh, Thanksgiving food with an Indian flair. So, you know, the, they, everybody brings a little of their own culture to it, but people who come, whether we are recent immigrants or whether we've grown up here and our, our families have been here for centuries, we all want to be around a table today, and we don't want anybody to be left out. And that is Eucharistic. Our Lord speaks about heaven very often times in terms of a banquet, and everybody should be there. We hear, we've just heard some of those parables uh, in, the, uh, in the gospel recently about wanting those, that, that banquet hall to be full. And you see, here I think could be some of President Lincoln's instinct is that somehow in that ceasefire and asking people to thank God and asking people to count their blessings, that it was a way to bring different people together who might not otherwise be together. When we eat, it's kind of an equalizing event. We're all admitting we need something to keep us alive and we need each other to do that. We live in a very polarizing world. There's so many strong opinions about what's the best way forward, politically, uh, even in our church, uh, in people's families, in communities. People have very strong opinions and they're oftentimes in, 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 in opposition to each other. And yet, in heaven, there are not gonna be banquet tables over here for the Republicans and here for the Democrats and here for the progressives and here for the conservatives. It's not going to be that way. There's going to be a surrender to something bigger than our own particular view of life and what is appropriate and right. It's to come into the vision of the kingdom of heaven. And that, my friends, is why we should celebrate Thanksgiving to be a little more human and more understanding of each other, to be a little more civil and generous and kind to each other, to be more understanding of each other, to hold on to our truth in love, to proclaim the goodness and the truth of God in a kind of attractive love that invites people to the banquet. As we celebrate Thanksgiving Day, we are all blessed for many reasons, and we're so blessed not least of all because here in our church on this altar, the Lord of the banquet invites us to the feast, uh, not just for a day, but for eternity. May we not miss this blessing. May we not neglect the source of the blessing. May we give thanks to the Father for all that we have and all that we are, and let us do penance for the times we've been disobedient and may we join around the great banquet feast today and please God for all eternity. Today, as we joyfully thank God for all the blessings we have been given, we ask continued blessings on ourselves, our neighbors, and our world. In thanksgiving for the freedom to practice our faith in this country, and for Bishop Cecchio and all the clergy who bring us Christ's sacraments and are themselves a sign of his presence, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. In thanksgiving for our nation, that we may show our gratitude by your reverence for God, who fosters our growth from the womb and 
who fashions us according to his will. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the renewing of family bonds in this day of tradition and thanksgiving together, for the healing needed by so many, the sick, the lonely, the imprisoned, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all of us offering this Eucharist, that the thanksgiving prayer of Jesus to the Father, that we may speak our praises at the feet of the Lord, whom we receive in communion and bring him grateful hearts. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our faithful departed loved ones, and especially for John and Louise Bayers and Conception Hotea, that the that having died with Christ, they may be singing their own song of thanks in the courts of heaven. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And for all the petitions that we hold in the silence of our hearts. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our <laughs> prayer. Generous and gracious God, you give us gifts beyond measure. Hear our prayers that we might one day fully share in your most wondrous gift of life everlasting. With grateful hearts we pray through Christ our Lord. Amen. <clears throat> a Thanksgiving offering will be taken at this time. All proceeds will benefit the social concerns outreach to the needy. Thank you for your continued support and generosity. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. God, our Father, from whose hand we have received generous gifts, so that we might learn to share your blessings and gratitude, accept these gifts of bread and wine, 
and let the perfect sacrifice of Jesus draw us closer to all our brothers and sisters in the human family, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. You have entrusted to us the great gift of freedom, a gift that calls forth responsibility and commitment to be truth that all to the truth that all who have a fundamental dignity before you. In Jesus, through his death and resurrection, we find our ultimate redemption, freedom from sin, and every blessing. And so with hearts full of love, we join the angels today and every day of our lives to sing your glory as we acclaim. by the power and working of the Holy Spirit. You give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. mystery of faith. celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray upon the oblation of your church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with St. Francis of Assisi and our patron saints, and with all the saints, 
on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth, with your servant Francis, our Pope, and James, our Bishop, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who are listening to you, as they are passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom, that we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory, through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. <laughs> the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say. graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to this supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am.
our communion hymn number 940, You Satisfy the Hungry Heart, number 940. <laughs>
We've just received our Lord in Holy Communion. Let us welcome him more deeply as we pray. Soul of Christ, sanctify me. Body of Christ, save me. Blood of Christ, inebriate me. Water from the side of Christ, wash me. Passion of Christ, strengthen me. O good Jesus, hear me. Within your wounds, conceal me. Do not permit me to be parted from you. From the evil foe, protect me. At the hour of my death, call me and bid me come to you to praise you with all your saints forever and ever, amen. O sacred banquet in which Christ is received, the memory of his passion is renewed, the mind is filled with grace, and a pledge of future glory is given to us. Let us pray. In this celebration, O Lord our God, you have shown us the depths of your love for all your children. Help us, we pray, to reach out in love to all your people so that we may share with them the good things of time and eternity through Christ our Lord. So again, good to be with you all, uh, certainly on behalf of myself, Bishop Bukowski, Father Christie, all the priests, the religious, the staff of the cathedral, a blessed and happy Thanksgiving to all of you and your, your loved ones and families. Um, we hope you have a great celebration and one that helps make us even more grateful for the blessings that God has given us. Um, certainly want to thank all those who work to make the liturgy so beautiful today. Uh, Father Christie and his team always do such a good job on these uh, holy days of and different bigger celebrations we have. The skulls sounded great. Our servers were eager to serve. When I came into sacristy, they were all just couldn't wait, huh? So thanks for coming, men. And thanks to our deacons and uh, ushers, everybody, readers. Thanks for all your help, huh? So enjoy your day with everyone. Uh, when I think of the things that I thank God for, uh, certainly on this day and every day, you, the people of the cathedral, are certainly one of them, uh, very, very much in my heart. So. Thank you for all that you are and do. Uh, I know of my love and prayers and gratitude for you, and I'm grateful that we're on this journey together. So God bless you. The Lord be with you. May mighty God bless you all, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. Thanks be to God. Our recessional hymn, number 636. Now thank we all our God, number 636.
everybody, Bishop Cecchio here. Just want to wish you a happy and blessed Thanksgiving. Uh, it's such a great time of year, uh, Thanksgiving. I love this holiday, uh, a day that reminds us of our need to thank God for the blessings that he's given us and to our country. And although we have so much to be blessed for, uh, we, we look around in the news and in the world and we see so many hardships, huh? And uh, it can sadden us, it can make us our hearts heavy on Thanksgiving. So we pray for all those situations. We pray in gratitude for the blessings that God has given us and our country. And maybe this year, make peace with one person if you need to make peace with someone, huh? Reach out to a family member or a friend uh, and start peace with you, huh? That's the way it starts to spread throughout our world. Uh, reconcile with someone that you need to, if there's somebody you need to. So uh, let's make that effort this week, huh? It'll make our uh, Advent season and Christmas all the more joyful, and it will help spread peace throughout our world. So, sorry to give you an assignment on Thanksgiving, a joyful, beautiful holiday for us all. Uh, but let's join in prayer, huh? Especially for those who need our prayers this year, even as we thank God for the blessings that he's given us. God bless you and happy Thanksgiving. Hello everybody, Bishop Cecchio here. Just want to wish you a happy and blessed Thanksgiving. Uh, it's such a great time of year, uh, Thanksgiving. I love this holiday, uh, a day that reminds us of our need to thank God for the blessings that he's given us and to our country. And although we have so much to be blessed for, uh, we, we look around in the news and in the world and we see so many hardships, huh? And uh, it can sadden us, it can make us, our hearts heavy on Thanksgiving. So we pray for all those situations. We pray in gratitude for the blessings that God has given us and our country. And maybe this year, make peace with one person if you need to make peace with someone, huh? Reach out to a family member or a friend uh, and start peace with you, huh? That's the way it starts to spread throughout our world. Uh, reconcile with someone that you need to, if there's somebody you need to. So uh, let's make that effort this week, huh? It'll make our uh, Advent season and Christmas all the more joyful and it will help spread peace throughout our world. So sorry to give you an assignment on Thanksgiving, a joyful, beautiful holiday for us all. Uh, but let's join in prayer, huh? Especially for those who need our prayers this year, even as we thank God for the blessings that he's given us. God bless you and happy Thanksgiving.